Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another video. Now today, I have a very, very exciting update for you guys. And this time around, it's another auction car acquisition. This channel is built on the backbone of disaster auction buys. But I would say this one is definitely stepping things up a notch because I haven't seen one of these in maybe like 10 years back when I was like in high school. So the fact that we have here is a Acura Integra GSR. It's a two door coupe five-speed manual transmission, fully original. Almost every single panel on this car is original. And if you know anything about these Acura Integras in these days, it's practically impossible to find one of these that's in one piece, let alone one from the auctions. This one was from the Copart in Northern California, brought all the way up here, and here it is today. It hasn't been touched. Nothing has been worked on it, and I'm gonna show you guys here in a second the full breakdown of what I think happened with this one. So, if you look back in the logs on this car and you were able to pull up the VIN, we eventually found out that this car was on cars and bids. So at one point in time, this was a very well-preserved GSR. And I mean, just down to the fact that it has the original GSR blades, no body kits, no knickknacks, no none of that, really shows a testament to who the previous owner was before it eventually met its demise. Now, it's gonna be hard for me to show you guys the condition of the paint because as you can see, this thing is filthy, man. Now in terms of the body itself, the hood is actually popped open. And what I have over here is I actually have the jump box. So what you can do is uh, hop in there and try and crank this over. But this car actually has no key, but we're able to crank it over. And I'll show you guys how to do that here in a second. Now, before we get into the video, I did wanna take one moment to speak about our sponsor for today's video, and that is Fantix. Now what I'm holding in my hand, believe it or not, is a tire inflator, and this is the Fantix 8X Apex. And this thing is so handy for us to be able to use something like a portable tire inflator. And we just came back from a rallycross event up in Bellingham, Washington. And this time around, it was actually on a motocross course. So behind me is the 2006 Corolla XRS that is owned by my friend James. And we ended up dual driving and we had such a blast in this car. And it was so important for us to have this on track so that we made sure that we had the correct PSIs. Because when you're working with something like a gravel tire, which we have in the trunk, it's very different from what's uh, currently on the car right now. So this is like your conventional all season tire. But when it comes to something like a gravel tire, it's a very different situation. Don't mind the mud. But in this case, this is so easy to use. You don't have to plug it into the cigarette lighter. And I think that was a, a huge blessing for us is that we didn't have to lug tires around to make sure that the wire was connected so that we had a power source. But you can easily just plug into this and be able to use it and utilize everything that it has to offer. And it even has a little flashlight which comes in handy, especially at the nighttime because we actually did some night racing as well. So what I'll do here is I'll just hook this up. All you have to do is you just turn on the device and it may look a little different on your screen because I believe the, the frame rate's gonna be a little different. So we're currently at 18 PSI and this was an opportunity for us to also drive this in the mud. So that's why the PSI was a little bit lower. But in this case, what I'll do is I'll, I'll bump this up to 23 for this demonstration. And it works really great. You kind of set it, forget it. You don't have to look at the gauge. You don't have to worry about it being at the wrong PSI. And it does a great job at what it does because it's tremendously helpful to have this type of stuff, whether you're autocrossing, rally crossing, drifting, or even just going to the grocery store. This is something that I would really recommend. And it even comes with some uh, other stem fittings too. So if you have like a Presta valve for like a bicycle, it comes with all the attachments to be able to put that on. It's easily rechargeable and the battery life is actually really nice. Huge thanks to Fantix for sponsoring today's video, but let's get back to it. So when you look at the front portion of the car, the one thing is even though this hood is popped open, you're gonna notice that this is protruding up. And I think maybe what happened is somebody maybe left some tools or maybe somebody left the jump box, tow truck driver was trying to jump it, and then the hood fell down. That's what I'm guessing happened here. And a thing that you can do with these old Hondas to double check that they're fully original, because you see these all the time, they get wrecked and put back together, wrecked, put back together, is you can check by the uh, stickers on the panels. And just after cross-referencing the ones on here, on here, on the hood, on the back bumper, most of it looks fully original. This is a black on black GSR, man. <laughs> With the manual transmission and the leather, GSR leathers, in pretty good shape for its age, really. 
Usually you see these torn up, very notorious for the stitching to get blown right here. Very commonplace, just like on the old uh, Lexuses from the early 90s. It's not super clean in here. You can see some vegetation here in the background. And of course you can see that portion of the cupboard there. I'm gonna hold off on showing you guys the full interior because there's a lot to go over with this one. Drilled and slotted rotors, nice upgrade. The fender liner looks like it may need some uh, attention, needs to be pulled back in, not a big deal. But this is seriously amazing, amazing find. It's got a little dent here, not a big deal. I think a little bit of massage, you may be able to save this original fender because it'd be nice to keep this all original. And uh, this is actually gonna be for a good friend of mine. I'm just here to really capture the story of this and share it with you guys because you know me and I'm a sucker for an old Honda. So as soon as I saw this, I had to make my way down here just to check out this thing in further detail. That'll be the whole basis of this is uh, I'm gonna be making some trips down here just to provide you guys with some updates. Who knows, maybe I might even get my hands dirty on this one and you know spend a little bit of time restoring this thing because I think this is gonna be one that you don't wanna mess with too much. This is one you wanna preserve because it's just such a good original example. Now, this may have been a city car at one point. As you can see, all the, the scuffing that's happening here on the back bumper, that's pretty commonplace that happens with these from parallel parking. You know, with a quick respray, if you wanted it to be 100% perfect, you could do it as so. But the only thing that's unfortunate is the hatch will not open. So there's like a little latch that happens back here. And you should be able to pop this up. But it's almost like it's welded shut. And I think it's just from the impact that it took right here. And you can tell it's been sitting for so long. It doesn't matter, man. Even if you hopped in it right now, you'd have so much fun with it. It's seriously a joy. And I think a very common place thing that you see with these Integras too is the moldings. Uh, over time and just with heat, they start to bow out like this. And it's just getting harder and harder to find like the trim pieces for the molding. But the craziest part of all this is I believe in the back seat, these a replacement moldings for this thing. And it also came with a huge bag of clothes and an extra battery. So I don't know what that's all about, but I think once we go into the other clues that's happening with this car, we'll be able to dissect it further. Now, another thing that I also wanted to mention, and I'm not sure if this happened on the tow truck or not, but when you look underneath here, it's like the, the muffler got pushed in. You see this, how it's like pushed all the way back? This is very fascinating. I'm not sure what's actually going on here, but as you can see with the undercarriage, there's barely any rust on this. This is really amazing. If you take a peek over here, you see that green? I'm pretty sure that's teen suspension. I don't know if it's a spring strut combo. I would guess it's coilovers, but a very nice upgrade. And you can tell the bushings look good. It looks like the rear sway bar from the factory. God, these are just such a joy to drive. You know, my first car was a four-door Integra. It was green, it was the LS, it wasn't a GSR. So let's pop into the interior real quick over here. What we can see what happened here as we look closer into the ignition is the fact that this got all torn apart. So this is all pushed down. And as you can see, they still kept the key over here, but what they actually did is they bypassed it by going here. So this is pretty common. So that I think where this resides is behind the lock cylinder itself. So if you're able to go in here, you would be able to turn this over with easily with just a few clicks. So now if you have a key or even a screwdriver, you should be able to start the car. As we know with these, they actually do have some sort of immobilizer. So since there's no key, all you can really do is crank it, but it won't start, unfortunately. No real goodies in here, but it's all here in one piece, and that's all we're looking for, especially with an old Honda like this. All right, let's see here. So I'll pop open the hood for you guys real quick. No engine swaps, no funny business, no hack jobs. 100% original GSR, the B18C1. So this is gonna be the dual overhead cam, VTEC engine, very, very popular engine swaps into other Hondas, but the GSRs from the factory came with this. See, it's got everything, even the original air conditioning. You can see, look at all the cobwebs just developing on the side over here. Tons of cobwebs, it's very dirty, very filthy inside of here, but with a cleanup, it would look really nice. And I don't know what's going on with the battery here. It looks like it's missing the tie down. Maybe that's the reason why we saw in the back seat that other battery. This is a well-preserved thing. Also another very common thing, the distributors being replaced on these Hondas, they're pretty notorious for giving issues over time. But this one, it's all here with the NGK plugs, very promising signs. It'd also be nice just to take this little vanity cover off and inspect the spark plugs just to see the condition. But just going off everything else, I would assume that it's in really, really good shape. And at the end of the day, it's an old Honda. 
got the sunroof. All GSRs, I believe, came with the sunroof. So we'll go here on the driver's side and we'll investigate a little bit further and maybe you guys can see better what I'm talking about. It's got the original Acura radio, original. I mean, that must be worth a small fortune these days. An original shift knob. And another thing you can tell is this car, I would say, was babied for a big portion of its life. Just by the fact that this isn't worn down, I've seen so many Integras where this, especially here on the sides where your hand rests, it just all gets torn up because of the, the leather stitching over here. This looks really good. Clutch feels nice. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent, excellent, man. This is so cool. And again, it's just very dusty in here. I'm not sure if maybe uh, they had the windows down or something, but it can kind of give you an idea. 137,000 miles on the clock. So to start this car, unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to crank it over all the way because this is completely exposed. And I think it seats like right here behind the lock cylinder. I can even see the little screws that they took out to remove this to be able to bypass the actual key source. So that now when you go to the first click, this will be like the accessories. And then the second click will be the ignition. So now when I try and crank it over, I'll put the clutch down just like you would start it. And the engine sounds very good. It sounds like it's cranking over really smoothly. But unfortunately, we won't be able to figure that out because you can see the, the green flashing light over there just by the fact that it doesn't have the immobilizer. So I think that will be a good thing for the next video what we do on this to provide you guys with another update. But in the meantime, it's got the sunroof. It's got all the accessories in here. Does it work? Oh yeah, man, it works really well. You're not scared of that get, getting stuck, Karush? <laughs> Man, uh, okay, it actually seated all the way. It went all the way down? Yep. Yeah, because I saw it was like popped up a little bit, yeah, right? Probably just some dirt or something. Was stuck in. Yeah, not a big deal though. All right, since we can't get the car started, we're thinking about experimenting with some starting fluid. So what we'll do is we'll maybe just spray some quickly into the intake. Look at that, it's so easy, two screws. So once we take this cone filter off, you want to give it a good spray, see, see how it goes. That. But I think you might be right about the immobilizer not being able to energize it. Might not it. fire it, but you know. Oh, I'll just give it a little backfire. Yeah, that should be good. Cause that stuff's pretty flammable too. Luckily we got some water, just in case. You want to do the honors? Yeah, go ahead. You sure? Sure. <laughs> oh, let me uh... go ahead. Okay. Yeah, that, I think the whole exhaust is off. Back, so the, uh, maybe the cat is just bent. Yeah. But it started. Yeah, man, it fired right up. I'm just trying to see where the bend is at in the exhaust, causing it to be that loud. Do you think it... No, actually, they stole the cat. Oh, they stole it. Yeah, the cat's missing. Oh, my God, they stole the cat. Yeah, it's Oh, damn. They can't get underneath there. No wonder it was so loud. I was like, man, it's really loud. Yeah, it's, it's actually cut. Hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's $800, six, $700 yeah. cat, but did you see it? No, I couldn't it's see it, unfortunately. It'd be cool to put this on the lift, too, and be able to see underneath what's going on and stuff. That and then get the interior going. Yeah, but I mean, the interior... The interior's not bad, though, really. No, just, just some stitching. Mm -hmm. It needs to be done in the center. You could reupholster this too. Fix, fix that, get the floor mats. It's gonna come out really nice. And then and get a full detail on it. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, you're gonna keep it? Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, this is a beautiful car, bro. I usually keep my stuff. So, I think we'll wrap up this for today's video, but thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.